All right. Okay, good prayer. Thank you guys and gal for that good prayer. And uh, so, as tradition holds it, um, we're going to talk about, have a review time. So, what are some things that stood out for you in our last Bible study? We've been set free. We've been set free. Yeah. Wonderful truth. And how? How do how what how does this happen? I mean, how do we how are we set free? And from what? From the power of sin. Yeah. From the power of sin. For the law, the life giving spirit in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin. Yeah. And death. A lot, yeah. So now we're starting to talk about the Holy Spirit. And you know, the Spirit is mentioned 20 times, I believe, 19 or 20 times in Romans chapter 8. Um, and it's interesting the way how it's put together. It's building up. It was building up to this, right? I mean, we couldn't really have Romans chapter 8 without Romans chapter 6 and Romans chapter 7 as a, as a, um, as a prelude so that we can understand, like, the Holy Spirit. You know, because now we have Romans chapter 6, our identity that we have in Christ. And the identity that we have is that we are crucified with Christ. But not only so, but we are risen with Him. We are risen with Christ. So we have His life. Um, and we are dead to the law. Romans chapter 7. We are free from the law, from the power of sin. We are dead to the law. Um, and now we can reckon ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus. Um, so yeah, so anything, anything else? Yeah, uh, that Jesus was made to be sin for us and that the condemnation was placed on. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Romans 8, 1 says there is no, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. No condemnation. So that's rather good news, I believe, right? Because the condemnation was put on Christ. He, was, he became sin for us who knew no sin, that we, then we receive His righteousness, that we might be made the righteousness of Christ. We receive His righteousness. Um, he received our sin, we received his righteousness, so there was an exchange that happened. And if we really believe this, if we really believe what Christ has done for us, we have to conclude that there is therefore now no condemnation mm -hmm. for those who are in Christ. And what does it mean to be in Christ? It's our position that we have, right? We are placed into Christ. We are put into him, and positionally you are in Christ. We're not in Adam in Romans chapter 5, Right? We are now in Christ. We have, actually, we are, we are dead. The first husband died, but now we are married to another. Right? It talks about that. Um, yeah, in Romans 7. So, that we, we, and then we are dead to the law, and we are alive. We are alive to, to the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus. So, that's good. So, what, so what else? You said something about unbelief separate, separates us from faith. Unbelief separates oh, us. Right. Well, yeah, because, well, unbelief, yeah. I mean, that's, unbelief is related to sin. And so it, it's linked to sin somehow, whereas faith is linked to love. So you have unbelief, it's linked to sin, and then you have faith, which is linked to love. You know, because faith works by love, Galatians 5, 6. So if we believe that God loves us, then that makes a, that produces a faith that works by love. But if I don't believe that God loves me, then I live in unbelief, and I end up living in sin as, as a result of it, because you don't believe what God has said. You don't believe in the promises of God. 
Does that help? I mean, does that make sense? Because like the nation of Israel, they didn't believe that God was going to you know, was going to do what he said and bring them to the promised land. So they murmured in the wilderness. Oh, you brought us out here to kill us in the wilderness. We don't have food to eat. We don't have water to eat. Well, remember what God said? Remember the miracles that happened? You cross through on the Red Sea and Moses raised his hands and the Red Sea parted on dry ground. It's like, ding, ding, ding. It's like, you, like, like, how come those miracles didn't produce faith? You know? Because it's a matter of the heart. It's something that happens in the heart. Um, and without faith, it's impossible to please God. And that's what it says here, that those that are in the flesh cannot please God, which we're going to get to in a minute. So, yeah. anyway, so... In Colossians 3, 2, that, you know, to set our affections on things above, and that we need to be in a place where we receive doctrine. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, set your mind on things above, set your affection on things above. The word is phroneo. So that's really good, because right here... It says that this word phroneo, it doesn't mean intellect. It doesn't mean you have this big, um, big education. It means to direct your mind toward. It's actually phronema here. I think it's the only place in the Bible where the phronema is at. But phroneo is in other places in the Bible. It just means to direct your mind toward something. So it says here that those that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And those that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So the, if you pursue... Verse five yeah. Yeah, those that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, those that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. <clears throat> and we can go back, we'll go back again here in a minute to, miss, to the things that we missed here. But So, in other words, that, do you pursue the things... The things of the Spirit. And so what are the things of the Spirit? It's like all things. We talked about all the things there are. Well, it is all things. To him that is spiritual, all things are of God. All things. It was like, you know, that, that, um, that he that is spiritual discerns all things. Right? In other words, they don't look at some things as a well, some of these things are not of God and some of these things are of God and we don't look at things as though there's some strange thing has happened unto us. Like what it says in First Peter, like we realize that all things work together for good to those that love God in Romans 8, 28. Right? So the things of God. So the, that, that it says here that those that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh, but those that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So, it's like, whatever you direct your mind toward, it means it's, then that's what's going to take over your thinking process. You know, if you come and you, if you put your mind to the, to the Bible, that's what's going to come back again. And it ends up being supernatural power. So it's kind of like, Faith is something that just happens. It's something that happens to you because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So we do do something. We, it doesn't, to be spiritual doesn't happen automatically, but it happens whenever you put yourself in a place where you receive the things of the spirit of God and then God begins to do the work because it's God who works in you, both the will and to do of his own good pleasure, but he does it as we come and we receive. So faith comes by hearing. We don't produce it ourselves. Just like love comes from God. True, true agape love comes from God. And so it isn't something that we produce, but it's something that is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. It's the work of God. But as we come and we get into the place where we can receive that, we become receivers of it, and then God does the work in our hearts and he changes our heart. He transforms our heart, and He's given to us the mind of Christ as a gift. 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have it. We have the Spirit of God, um, and now we make the choice to walk in the Spirit. This is like if we walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, right? Galatians 5.16. So walk in the Spirit, 
and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So this is what you do. You walk, like it means all around, the, the word peripateo means to walk all around about, like in the sphere of something, like in the sphere of the spirit. You walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And this is victory. This is overcoming sin that we're talking about. Um, what Paul talked about that he wanted to do but then the more he tried to do it, then he found, he discovered that, that, it was, that, he, that he couldn't do it in the energy of the flesh. And that's what the law does. The commandments, they, they lead us to, to try to serve God in the energy of the flesh. And we discovered that we can't do it. We can't do it without the power of the Spirit. We need the Spirit. We need to be, number one, we need to be born again. And then number two, we need to walk in the Spirit. Because it's possible to be born again and to not walk in the Spirit. It's possible to be born again and to be carnally minded. Because a lot of people, like, like, well, not a lot of people, but there are some commentaries that's saying, that, well, this is talking about saved and unsaved. But it's really, it's talking about spiritual and carnal. Spiritual and carnal. We've already, de de um, we've already defined that an unsaved person cannot be carnal. An unsaved person is natural. They can only be natural. But an unsaved person, I, 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 they, someone who's born again, only someone who's born again can be carnal. Because we have the three people groups in 1 Corinthians chapters 2 and 3. The natural-minded person, or the, or the person who's natural, cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness on him. He cannot understand them because it takes spiritual discernment. 1 Corinthians 2.14. But in 1 Corinthians 3.1... He called them carnal, but they were babes in Christ. They were they were like they were like little infants. I think the word in the Greek means uh, means an infant, like ne nepios. I think it is. It's an infant, not a not a technon or technios, but but an infant, and they haven't grown into maturity. They are carnal. You know, so this is what this is talking about here. Um, he's talking about our warfare that we have and the power of the Spirit that we have as being believers that we have, that number one, we are in Christ. And now, so before we get too far, before, is there anything else? Because I could just start going off. You <laughs> talked about the new heart. Yes, the new heart. 26, 26. Yes. Says, I will put my spirit within you, yeah, and cause you to walk in my statutes. So, you know, it's kind of neat, you know, it's like that law of the spirit of life, not the law of you're right, tablets, um, rules, you know, it's yeah, it's, a code, it's like a, a relationship, yeah, you know, that you're given and taken. And you obey from the heart. Mm -hmm. That form of doctrine which delivers you, I believe that it means, right? It's not delivered to you, but it sets you free. That form of doctrine, you've obeyed from the heart. That This form of doctrine that Paul the Apostle, he was saying this teaching of grace. This kind of doctrine, this like what we're talking about here, instead of like, oh, well, we're going to teach about the law and about what you're doing and what you're not doing, we're going to really drive home the commandments and you got to keep the Sabbath and you got to do all these things. We're going to have preaching about that or we can have preaching about Christ and what he's done for us. And that's what actually sets you free from the power of sin. Interesting. So anyway, yes, thank you. Anything else here? Because we talked also about the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus was set us free from the law of sin and death in verse 2. Because one brought death, because to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace through Christ Jesus. So what the law could not do, that it was weak. It wasn't a problem with the law, right? Because we talked about that before. Because the law is, is, is good, holy. What else was it? Spiritual. 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 Well, there was another thing, though. It was... 
it was holy, holy and, righteous. and righteous. So it wasn't a problem with the law. It was like as one person had said before, someone said this, that the anchor of the law is strong, but the heart, the soil of the heart is soft and it, and it can't hold it. You know, like, the, like God cannot change being righteous. God cannot change being holy. So the law brings that out. But the sinfulness of man cannot adhere to God's holiness and God's perfection. And so that's why the Holy Spirit would enter now, would be in us, and give us the ability to point to the things of Christ. Now, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He points to Christ. Not to the letter of the law. He points to Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? All right, so what, so what else? I have a question. Okay. The likeness of sinful flesh. <clears throat> it was weakened through the flesh by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. Okay. So what does that work? What does. I'm intrigued by the word likeness. And then sinful flesh. Hmm. Well, I think it means in the similarity of it. And I mean, it just goes back to like, I mean, he became sin for us who knew no sin. So he didn't himself didn't sin, but it was in the similarity of sin. But he became sin for us, but he knew no sin. So I think that. In the similarity of the, in the likeness of sinful flesh, it became sin for us. He was, um, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Here is what it says condemned. Because he became, he was condemned for us. So, and he conquered sin and overcame sin, and overcame sin and death. So Jesus condemned sin, and he overcame sin, which was the result of sin, which was death. And he rose from the dead. And he conquered sin and death. And so, even though that we have a physical body, and our physical body is going to die, but the Bible says that our physical bodies will be redeemed. 1 Corinthians 15 uh, brings that out, um, and we will be risen, we will be physically raised from the dead in the future, but we've been given this life now, we have this life, we are partakers of the divine nature, so we have this life. Um, so, I mean, hopefully, I mean, I think it's understandable, right, in the similarity of, in the similarity of sin, Homo, homo what? Homo moima. Moima? Homo moima. Okay. So it's a resemblance. Or like yeah. This. Master, so in the likeness, he came in the likeness, was, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, um, is, is, was he identified with the sin of man? Yeah, I mean, he just, he became sin. And it goes back to 2 Corinthians 5.21 and other verses I'm sure that we can find. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.21, that he became sin for us who knew no sin. So in other words, all of the sins of the world were placed upon him. And so the, he was the substitute. He was the substitute for sin. So Jesus substituted so that the substitution means that we are set free as a result because only one can be tried, right, for it. Um, so I think that's good. I mean, if we need to look at it further, we can. We can do a study on it yeah. and talk about it. We could all do a study on it and talk about it again. Okay. What, what does, in what sense is the <clears throat> word flesh being used here? The old sin nature. 
the old sin nature. So, yeah. And then it says in verse 3, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the spirit, but after the flesh. So it talks about the righteousness of the law. And this is, of course, the law of Moses that he's talking about here. The righteousness of the law, that it might be fulfilled in us who what? Who do what? Not, don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. But if I try to obey the commandments, it's going to be walking in the flesh. Because doing things in the energy of the flesh, doing with, with, self, with self being the, the power behind it. And we find out that the, what the law could not do, it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the, the old sin nature. So now that the, the righteous law who might be foolish who walk not after the flesh, because all that the flesh did, it was weak through the law. It is now, but now we have through the Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. Okay? And now it says that, verse 5, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So we have death and we have life. Carnally minded is death. Spiritually minded is life and peace. And, you know, I think we can, we, we've experienced that in our, in our own lives. We've seen people in, our, in like, maybe our relatives uh, that make bad choices. And it's because of the old sin nature. It's because of the flesh. And they end up uh, reaping the consequences of it. Because that's what sin does. It, it produces death. Um, and, and we know from our own experience that that's true. So that, but to be carnally minded is death. This is talking about the mind, right? What we are thinking about. So to be carnally minded is death. Um, necros here, it just means, that does not mean annihilation, it means separation. Separation from life. Death is separation from life. Isn't it? Just like, just like darkness is separation from light. It is like no light is darkness. No life is death. Um, and so um, you can say silence is the absence of sound, right? Um, death is the absence of life, but the Spirit gives life. And what did Jesus say? That the flesh profits nothing, but the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The words. It comes through hearing words. It's like, what, what is it? It is like, you know, there's, there's people who look at this like this is a waste of time, that you're just talking about words, where you're just coming to what just to hear some words being spoken. But it's the words, it's the word of life. It's the word of His grace that builds us up and gives us, gives us, uh, gives us an, an inheritance in Acts 20, 32. It's the word of life. It's the word of the spirit of life. Um, and that's why it's for, through the foolishness of preaching that God has chosen to save those that believe. It's like, we see the value in it, in hearing this, the word of God, because it has to do with the mind. To be carnally minded is death. I need my not, but people say, well, you're being brainwashed. You know, well, I need my brain to be washed. Because <laughs> it's quite dirty. It needs, like, I need to have a new way of thinking. I need to be renewed. My, my soul will cleave to the dust, but I'm quickened according to the word. We're quickened. This is what the Bible says, Psalm 119, right? I think verse 11. Um, so, they, they're, they're, okay, so for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Here's the reason, Right? It's an enemy of God. Wow. An enemy of God. It is um, like in James 4. It says, let me see if I can turn to it here real quick. Um, in James 4, 4. Let's turn there real quick. 
It says, you adulterers and adulteresses, know, know you not that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Therefore, therefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And it goes back to 1 John 2, 15, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you can't have both. You can't have love God and love the world. Um, you can't be carnally minded and please God. You can't be carnally minded and not be against God because sin is against God. Sin is against God. So it is to the carnal mind. This is talking about the Christian here. Someone who's carnally minded. Someone who's born again. To be carnally minded. It is the carnal mind is enmity against God. And if it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, the law of God. What's the law of God? It's talking about the, the law that God gave that he wrote with his fingers on tables of stone and was given to Moses. Um, it, is, it cannot be subject to this law. It's not possible. Um, but, and it says it is not able to. Um, and then it says in verse 8, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, this does not mean unsaved. It just means being controlled by the old sin nature. And it's not possible to please God, because what pleases God? Faith. faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Hebrews 11, verse 6, right? It says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. It even gives, like, where faith begins, right? Because it says, for... For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So in other words, like faith begins where real, maybe realize, see in creation and know that there is a creator that created it. And so it begins with there is a God. There is a God. If you talk to somebody and say, well, there is no God. Well, you've got a big hurdle to step over now because they believe there is no God. I mean, we're way over that, right? We believe there is a God. And there's evidence that there is a God because of creation that's given. Because in my mind, I don't see how that we could even exist here without there being a God. Because the odds are you have a better chance of winning the lottery than for life to exist by accident on earth, which is what science believes. You know, they believe that we just formed out of the dust. Interesting, because God created Adam out of the dust. You know? Out of the dust of the earth. But they just think, well, it just did it on its own. That's not what it says in the Bible. It didn't just do it on its own. God did it. And so we believe that. We believe there is a God. And if you seek for God, then you find Him. And that pleases God. Faith pleases God. Um, so it says here, but they that are in the flesh, because the flesh is against God, it's not subject to the law of God, it's not able to, it indeed cannot be, it cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. In verse 9. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. The word dwell here is oikeo, I believe, in the, in the Greek. And it means to like, to like live in. To like dwell, to operate in. So that, that you are not in the flesh but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. This is talking about the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God operating in you, in your heart, um, in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And the Spirit of Christ here is none other than the Holy Spirit himself. Because the Spirit of Christ, or the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, points to Christ. In Christ, we, and now this is interesting here, it says, um, verse 10, And if Christ be in you, in, verse, in chapter 8, verse 1, we have in Christ. In, chapter t in verse 10, we have Christ in you. Remember what we talked about? It was a few, few weeks ago. Was it like two weeks ago or something like that in our Sunday morning service? Because what did we say? Do you remember? What is, what is each one? 
Yeah, Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. In Christ, it has to do with your position. And then Christ in you is your experience. So we have our position in Christ. But then we have Christ in you is the manifestation or the, of being in Christ. How do you know that you are, that Christ is in you? How do you know that the Spirit of God dwell in you? It's like prove your own selves that, 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 that Christ is in you. Prove your own selves. In other words, like test and approve. Do, 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 do keo. Test and approve. In other words, like Christ is in you. Well, I say that I'm in Christ, but then I just live like the world and nobody can see it. There's no evidence of it. Because there are churches today that make like a big emphasis on the evidence of the Holy Spirit. And their ministry is about the Holy Spirit. But really, our ministry is about Christ. And what does the Holy Spirit do? He points to Christ. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. It is the Spirit of Christ. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. And if so if Christ is operating in you, if Christ is in you, then yeah, the body is going to be dead because of sin, because the operation the, the, of, of Christ is in you. That the, the operation of the Holy Spirit is in you. Does this make sense? Because this is talking about victory of, from sin. This is talking about, number one, no condemnation, right? There, and there's no separation. It ends with no separation. Um, and, so, um, and so now we have Christ in you. If Christ in you, yeah, the body is dead because of sin. So this is the operation of Christ. This is the spiritually minded individual. They are spiritually minded. Um, and not carnal. Um, so, amen? amen? We'll go back over those again next time. So, let's pray. So, Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for the Word of God. It does not return void. It does its purpose when we mix faith with it. We just want to give anyone an opportunity, if you've never accepted Christ before, to accept Him today as your Savior. It's the gift of God. You can ask Him right now to, to save you with a simple prayer. Just say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm not good enough to go to heaven but you died in my place and you paid the penalty of all my sins. I accept you as my Savior and I accept the free gift of eternal life. I want to go to heaven when I die. I want to be saved. Save me, Jesus. And if you've said that prayer, then give me a call. 727-452-7445. 727-452-7445. Amen.